Slardigum guys, we need to have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> we need to talk about Wahid. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to the channel. And today we're covering a update to our review on Wahid Invest. So a couple of weeks ago, we had a video on the channel, which was all about Wahid's new app. And since then, there has been news which many of you would have heard about, the $300,000 SEC fine that they've given to Wahid. And we've covered that in an article extensively, but we thought we'd also come out to you with a video as well. And I've got none other than Ibrahim Khan with me to discuss this breaking news. Let's do it. So Ibrahim, what's, what's happened? Yeah, definitely. So like, I guess before we dive into it, there's a couple of things that I think it's really important to like flag to you guys and just to kind of clarify. Firstly, uh, in terms of you know, our relationship with Wahid, we have relationships with Wahid, like pretty much every Islamic fintech out there because we're a platform. The way we make money is that we, are, uh, we have affiliate relationships, a bit like Money Saving Expert or Go Compare or any other comparison website out there. Um, but the way that we approach it is we keep our content team and our partnerships or commercial team separate. And we don't particularly, in the content team, don't particularly care who pays them as long as you know they're writing good stuff that's useful for our audience. So that's kind of how we deal with that, um, you know, that conflict. Um, the second thing, Mohsin. Sure. And the second thing is to say that look, when we when we started this in in 2015, our goal has always been about you and about making Muslims wealthier. Uh, and this is a collective goal. We see ourselves as a as a community uh, operation. And everything that we do is centered around that mission. And we will, inshallah, stay true to that. And if we don't, you can comment below and, uh, and we'll find out. Um, OK, so what happened? What happened was uh, Wahid Invest, uh, which is a company which has lots of different uh, bases in different countries. The US company of Wahid got fined $300,000 by the SEC. Uh, and they, they, they settled. Um, what was otherwise going to be an investigation or litigation into Wahid Invest. Uh, and the SEC pointed out three things uh, which they were upset about. Who are the SEC? Uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission. So this is the US regulator, the equivalent of the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK. Um, very respected and you know, very uh, well, well known regulator in the world. Um, and the, the SEC basically said that, look, Wahid, you've messed up on three things. The first is you made misleading statements. So somewhere in your uh, content or your articles or your paperwork, you said that you were running a fund, whereas strictly speaking, you weren't running a fund at all. You were running uh, a managed uh, portfolio. Uh, and so the difference is a fund is an actual entity or a vehicle that, that you invest money into, whereas a managed portfolio, you're actually you know, running a strategy and you're investing in specific in investments. Um, so that's the first thing uh, that the, the SEC said that you messed up on. You shouldn't have been doing that. The second thing uh, is um, you breached your fiduciary duty. And what that basically means is that Wahid uh, Invest should have told their customers when they started using their money to invest or seed the halal ETF that they set up a few years later after launching. And that was obviously beneficial um, to some extent for Wahid because it seeded the ETF and it got it off to a good start and then other people could invest in it and it kind of mounted up. Um, so the ETF is Wahid's own fund which later came down the line. Exactly. Right? So just for clarity, so initially Wahid didn't have a fund. So it took money from these managed portfolios into this new fund that it had launched. And obviously it's in Wahid's interest for this fund to have money going into it. And they had a ready pot of money that they could put into it. And they didn't make that exactly clear. Agreed. And, and I think that, so that's obviously not a good thing, right? Um, I think the SEC, the reason why they didn't perhaps find them even more or crack down on them even more is because they didn't really materially um, you know, economically disadvantage the customers because um, the fees uh, were 0.5, I think, from memory on the fund and 0.49 on the managed portfolio. So like it was a matter of a few like cents or a few pennies, um, that was the difference. So um, from that respect, you know, they, it could have been a lot worse, um, but, but you know, thankfully it wasn't uh, for Wahid and the customers. Uh, but I still do think that you know, it's really important that you know, they should have flagged that, look guys, we are benefiting in some way 
from uh, using your money in, in a way that other than that we initially had agreed. Uh, so we want you to kind of be aware of that. Um, now, practically, no one is actually like, once you flag it to them, which, by the way, they have now been flagging in, uh, in going forward in other ETFs that they've launched, um, no one has turned around um, and said, look, uh, angry email, I'm not happy about this. It's just like a procedural thing, but it's about how you go about it and you, know, you kind of uh, you know, conduct yourself properly on that front. Yeah. And then the final thing was uh, around the um, Sharia compliance uh, guidelines and the lack of written policies uh, uh, for purification in particular. And there were some concerns about whether or not the purification uh, feedback was actually being given to the different customers. So that was the other you know, big concern that the, the, the SEC raised uh, with, with Wahid Invest. So Mohsin, what are we to make of all this? I mean, as you said, it's not a good thing, right? What we're, what we're discussing here is not you know, lavishing praise on, you know, on someone for doing something good. It's objectively not, not good. But that being said, um, I mean, you're a Wahid customer yourself. Uh, I'm admittedly... My dad is as well. I'm admittedly not. Um, so let me throw that question back at you. What, what have you done or you know, how, how are you kind of thinking about it? Yeah, it's a good question. So I think you know, obviously I have a, a lot more understanding of regulation and the law than I guess the average person. But I think for me, the key things that I would be thinking about is, you know, does this affect my money? And you know, is there anything that I need to be doing about that? Um, and the answer to that um, in my analysis is, you know, I, I, don't, think, I don't think it's affected my money, um, particularly because I'm a UK customer for a start. But then secondly, because, um, you know, what the, these concerns that were raised were around marketing and making sure that communication was right and making sure that the back end office was right. This isn't to do with, you know, why had you put, put the money in the wrong place or you lost people money, that's not the concern. So that would be the first and foremost thing that I would be thinking about. Um, and and I'm, I'm pretty happy that, you know, why had they've done that right. Um, the, the second thing I would be thinking about is, but hang on, you know, as an Islamic fintech, particularly around the written policies and Sharia guidance and, and that sort of thing, if you said you're going to do it, then you definitely should do it. And, uh, and that is something that, you know, I would want Wahid to come out with a very clear response to, because like, you know, I guess there's two ways of dealing with this kind of situation. Mm. One is, you know, burying your head in the sand. And then the other one is, um, you know, putting your kind of hand up and saying, look, these were the issues this is what we've done to address it. Mm. Because no one's perfect. And, and every single fintech that I know pretty much yeah. has had some kind of fine against it. So Monzo, Revolut, uh, the guys in, like a whole bunch of people in America. Yeah. It, every single day, this stuff happens and there's bigger fines as well. Yeah. So Espe it, especially in the US, right? Because especially in the US. Um, <coughs> so, so that bit doesn't concern me. It's like, now, now what? Yeah. Like, how are you responding to it? And I think to, to their credit, um, they've brought in an external compliance person that's going to do a full review. Uh, these were, by the way, allegations from three years ago. So a lot of has changed since then as well. I know they've hired a whole bunch of regulatory heavyweights as well to kind of beef up their compli compliance function. What, what are your thoughts, Mohsin, hearing think, all of this as a kind of neutral person who's yeah, not involved? I think my, my sense of it, and, and I've spoken to a lot of people, uh, obviously, you know, we get people asking us all the time about different players on the market. I think my sense of it is, you know, if I were going to, um, you know, become a Wahid customer, I'd probably just speak to existing customers. Um, you know, have you, have you actually moved your money out of Wahid? If yes, why? If no, why not? Have the comms actually improved over the years? How, how, have, they, how have they gotten? Um, and also noting as well, this is a US specific thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know if these allegations extend globally. My understanding is that they don't. No. So, you know, clearly this possibly only affects a subset of, of the Wahid customers. So my overall feeling, I guess, even you know, not being a Wahid customer, is in, in many ways similar to yours, I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, in terms of really just the, the final things, you know, we as a Muslim consumer, uh, and I guess IFG, we, we often you know, talk from a Muslim consumer's perspective, we should be uh, robust, but also I think sympathetic with, uh, with our institutions. Um, and if we think that they have messed up, which I think, you know, clearly in this situation, there's been some things that have gone wrong, they should be cajoled and pushed to rectify those things. Um, but at the same time, I don't think we should throw them under the bus. 
because like you know um, Monzo and Revolut and Cash App and all of these other ones yeah. that regularly have you know issues. We we continue using them HSBC for heaven's sake or NatWest. That was HSBC um, was the one on my mind. Yeah. You know they, these guys get fined hundreds of millions of pounds yeah. uh, for serious stuff that they've messed up on, and we continue using them um, without blinking an eye. I, I think you know we we need to be kind of consistent, I guess, in that respect. That yeah. we can't just because a Muslim or a Muslim company is messed up yeah. doesn't mean that we kind of. Um, you know, uh, tar and feather them kind of thing. Sure, I think that's true, but I think the um, the thing I guess to say as as an addition to that is that one, yeah, really important to kind of contextualize it. But I think the other thing to say is where you are a smaller player, and and although Wahid are big, in the grand scheme of things, you know, they're they're not very big. Sure. Um, you know, I think you have additional responsibilities and additional duties. Like you know, I see Wahid in many ways, and you know, we've kind of said this before as a trailblazer for a bunch of Islamic companies. Yeah. And you know, if these are the guys that everyone else is kind of looking up to within the Islamic space, they've almost got a higher ethical and moral yeah. and governance uh, standards. So I think, you know, frankly, that, that, that would be you know, what, what I would say. Yeah, and I, I also, frankly, I think it applies to us as well, mm. because you know, I don't think we can, we can't clown around. Yeah, um, and I think we need to make sure that we, um, you know, we are as kind of honest and have that, kind of, you know, that taqwa, frankly, about this stuff um, as much as possible. So yeah, on that, on that bombshell. Um, any any anything else? No, I think uh, I think that's it. Let's uh, let's go and record the news. <laughs> <laughs> let's do that. Assalamualaikum.